Hi, Blue Demons. Welcome to Alumni Experts. My name is Shanara Sanders. I'm a graduate of the College of Commerce, class of 2001, with a concentration in finance. Today, I want to share with you some tools in which you can use poetry as therapy and as a change agent. You see, throughout my careers in finance and banking, I also flourished as a professional poet. Yes, I did. Now, before I was ever hired to write, poetry was and remains an affordable and healthy constant in my life. Now here's the first piece of good news. Anyone can be a poet. You see, I use the word poet in an acronym, which stands for a person openly expressing themselves. In this case, in verse. So I want you to embrace this idea of you being a poet. Come on, say it with me. I am a poet. I am a person openly expressing myself in verse. Did you say it? Okay, good. You don't want to cheat yourself in this process. Trust me, it's going to be fun. Now you need to decide what you want to use poetry for. Will it be as therapy or will it be as a change agent? Or maybe you want to do both. That's good. You see, sometimes poetry is the only way that I've felt that I can make something plain. So I vacillate between both. Sometimes you need to take care of yourself, i.e. through the therapy part, before you can get to being a change agent for anyone outside yourself, right? I actually use poetry, spoken word to be exact, in my own one woman show, Ask a Black Woman. Let's face it, difficult subject matters are um, more easy to accept when it's wrapped in a more entertaining package. In this case, with poetry, the forms of rhythm, alliteration, and rhyme can get into your psyche much faster. Think about how they taught us our alphabet, how our manners, how to treat one another, or even the ways we receive messages even now through songs and media. All of that further confirms my point about how poetry is such a strong device. Using it as a change agent is one thing, but what about the therapy part? For example, I've processed so much heartache and heartbreak and volumes of poetry you guys will never see. But the point is, is that once I started writing, it's like an emotion, the emotions overflowed and I just kept going and it erupted. And that was therapy for me. And perhaps it may be for you. Just think about it this way. Your needs change daily, sometimes throughout the day. So don't get caught up in I'm not sure about what I want to do. It's all about you. So just decide now. Maybe today you don't want to be a change agent. Today you need to take care of yourself and it's fine. So go for it. So first, let's start with some deep breathing. Why? Because deep breathing, it settles you. It steals you so that you can get into the flow. Oh yes, writing is all about the flow. Mm -hmm. See, we want to make sure that we are accessing everything from the crown to the ground. You're gonna need all of it, okay? So the way we're gonna do our uh, deep breathing is on counts of four. We're gonna take in air and fill up our lungs just on four counts. We're going to hold it for four counts and then exhale on four counts. We're gonna do that uh, three times back to back. Okay, let's go. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four and in two three four hold two 
three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And in, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. Ooh, just those three, it felt so good. You gotta breathe, y'all. All right, so now that you breathe, Sometimes you may need to do that several times. For myself, that could be anywhere between five to 10 minutes of deep breathing. Why? Because most times our minds are always going steadily, steadily, steadily on the to-do list. And we want to calm that down so that we can access everything that we need in this moment, okay? So now that we're settled, now that we have a base going on here, I want you to um, answer these three questions, okay? The first question is, what do I want? What do you want out of this time of being a poet? What do you want to get done here, okay? Next, ask yourself, what do I need? What do you need from this? And the third question, what are you committed to at this moment? Right now, what's the, what's the one thing that you're committed to doing right now? It may be as simple as listening. Or you might say, open. Okay? I want, you to I want to challenge you to answer those questions with one word. See, what we're trying to do is make it simple and make it plain. Don't stress yourself out on this. We're going to start you off with a journal warm-up that I call the rhythm of life. I like the rhythm of life because it's so simple. Poetry is just in the, the minutia of the day, okay? So basically, you're going to write out the details of your morning. So set your timer for five minutes and you're gonna write five minutes non-stop. And I want you to write what happened the moment you woke up this morning. And every uh, step has its own sentence. Every sentence has its own line. I'll say it again. The details of your morning from the time you woke up. Every step has its own sentence. Every sentence has its own line. I want to show you how poetry um, is found in the, in the mundane, is found in everyday life. Okay, so if I were to uh, say uh, my steps, my rhythm of life, when I woke up this morning, I would say I woke up this morning, my eyes fluttered open, I sat up, swung my legs to the edge of the bed, put my feet on the floor, stood up, and then I walked. One step, two step, three steps, four. Open the bathroom door. See? Oh, that was off the dome. See, I want every step, I want every sentence had its own line. It just so happened that it rhymed. Oops, I rhymed. So uh, I want you to do that. For the next five minutes, just let it flow. Don't try to rhyme. The thing, don't try to rhyme. Just write the lines, okay? Ready, set, flow. All right, so as we get into our first poetry exercise, I want to give an example um, from my poetry idol, Miss Gwendolyn Brooks. She is heralded as Chicago's own for her Pulitzer winning poetry. So maybe you're familiar with this particular poem. We real cool. We left school. We lurk late. We strike straight. We sing sin. We thin gin. We jazz June. We die soon. Mm. Yeah. See, she, she uses everyday language to talk about inner city life. She has a simple form for that poem. Four verses with two 
rhyming lines each. Very simple, but yet very poignant. So that simple rhyme scheme, not using a lot of poetry devices, kind of reminds me of old school hip hop. Maybe Curtis Blow, the brakes. Brakes on your car, brakes to make you a superstar. So every line was always in rhyme and it was quick, right? And they always observed uh, inner city life from their viewpoint as well. Now, Gwendolyn Brooks, she did it first though, because We Real Cool was published in 1963, but that's a sidebar. But uh, for the purposes of what we're doing, I just want to give you a little bit of inspiration. We're gonna do something called the See Something, Say Something exercise. And basically, just like um, Gwendolyn Brooks was in the, uh, the mode of change change it by seeing something. And then um, in her poetry, she shared the uh, consequences of the actions of the teens that she saw hanging outside of the pool hall. I want you to think about something. Think about one thing that you've observed that you got something to say about it. Poetry is that device that if you've seen it and you have something to say about it, you're probably not the only one that has seen it and it's moved you to speak. This is that time to do so, guys. So I want to challenge you to keep it simple. If you want to rhyme, that's fine, but keep it simple. Just see it and say it. Set your timer for five minutes. Ready, set. Flow. Now for our final exercise, I'd like to recite an excerpt from my own poem called Black. Here's an example. I am nights over Egypt, five days on the nine. Gullah dialect, the blues and the moonshine. I'm four little women, four girls in Alabama. Cast iron skillets, red Kool-Aid, and country grandma. Miss Betsy, negra, la femme noir. Press and curl, church girls, shiny knees like ta. Samba hips and big lips from VA to Granada. Pentecostal and Coptic plantains and empanadas. Original twerk work, the gumbo roux and the jerk. Ancient old mysteries that people still search on. Sweet in your cornbread, meat in your greens. Legs like Josephine, the scats that Ella sings. The yin to the yang, the balance the earth brings. I'm black. Mm. Oh yes. See, um, that free verse, it follows a simple rhyme scheme, um, but um, it is an exercise in self-love. I take the things that I was once um, ashamed of, things that have not always been um, celebrated in mainstream culture, and I make an homage, an ode to my heritage. I use poetic therapy for my self-love. So, for our final five minutes, I want you to reflect on your heritage or maybe your childhood. And I want you to think of the good stuff, okay? I want you to think of the fun, the fascinating things, even some of the things you think are just mundane. I bet, I bet we need to hear about it, okay? Celebrate you in this piece. Remember, don't judge, just jot. Ready, set, flow. I'm back. I just want to know, how did that feel? Was it weird or exhilarating? Maybe it was just downright challenging. Did you uh, recite your poetry out loud? If you haven't, you should definitely try it. Just, just do it. Did you get what you needed? or wanted? Um, did you stay fully committed to this time to be a poet? Did you? If you made it to the end of this video, you flowed with me all throughout this process, go ahead, give yourself the proverbial dap, pat on the back or fist bump, because you, my friend, have just used poetry as a change agent or poetry as therapy. Please remain a poet. 
a person openly expressing themselves in verse.